In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get amazing results like this in no time at all using chipping medium without an airbrush. So welcome to another Artist Hopes video. We have a very, very targeted one today. We're using this product, which is AK Interactive's Heavy Chipping Fluid. If any of you have heard of the hairspray technique, basically what it refers to is uh, putting down something, putting uh, paint, <laughs> putting down a layer over that that's pretty much like varnish. People used to use hairspray or whatever. And then you put down paint over that, do some painting, and then you scrape it back using water. And so the paint doesn't stick as well as it would to, to other paints. So you can remove that and then leave what's below. So in the case of this one, um, it leaves the yellow below and uh, lets you scrape off the black stripe that I put on there. It's a really, really solid technique. It's very, very uh, forgiving. It's also good fun. It's nice. You're working with kind of random effects and it looks really organic and that's the idea of it. So uh, please subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to us. It uh, really does make a big difference. Uh, it gets us higher up rankings and more likely to be recommended and stuff like that. Please give us a like and absolutely please comment below. Uh, out of our subscribers, uh, anyone who gives the best comments uh, and stuff like that, once a month we are going to draw one of you, uh, not out of a hat, we'll pick you and um, you'll be sent a little message and then we'll send you a set of our brushes and a texture palette as well. So we love you getting involved and we'd like to be able to give you something back. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so <clears throat> the product we're using here is Heavy Chipping Acrylic Food from AK. They have two versions. This is the one that will give us the, uh, the larger chips in theory and they're both affected by a couple of factors. Um, how thick the layer of the fluid you you put down and then also how much water you use uh, in the following stages which I'll explain shortly and um, how, how physical you are whilst trying to remove them. And essentially what you do with this stuff is you put it down, it's like a varnish, and then you put other paint on top of it which you have to be fairly careful with and then you use something that's got moisture, just water on it, to remove that and it will remove it down to the stage where you applied this. Hopefully that makes sense. So think about it. Stage one is turquoise, stage two is this fluid, stage three is going to be painting white, and stage four is removing that white down to the turquoise. Now obviously if you painted the entire thing um, rusty red brown and then put chipping fluid all over it and then you carefully painted or airbrushed it with turquoise, instead of removing this white stage you're about to add, you could actually chip down to what looks like rust underneath and that's you could do that and then do this white stripe. And there's a, there's a lot of stuff there and this is where military modelers really make some crazy leaps and bounds in terms of <coughs> efficiency techniques. So what I've got here is some masking tape. I've cut this with scissors because you get nice straight lines. Hopefully I've put it down fairly straight, we'll see afterwards. If, any, if I screw up around any edges, my plan is to do weathering on those sections at a future date. But uh, let's see how this goes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and show you how to do this without an airbrush, because normally normally you would apply this fluid by airbrush. So I'm going to take some of it with the back of my brush, put it on my palette, and it advises you to use uh, two or three thin coats by airbrush. So what I'm going to do is a couple of thin coats with stippling by brush brush. But what's important for me is that each of these coats, we need to make sure that we cover the entirety of this area. So. I also don't want to put it down too thick because at this point that is 100% going to lead to um, it seeping underneath. I don't know if that's a bad thing but I don't know what would happen if I did do that. So that's it. Basically we're applying a couple of thin coats. I'll let this dry, apply two more and then we'll come back to the next stage. So we've got our third coat drying there. Um, don't use one of your, your newest and best brushes with this unless you're willing to clean it immediately afterwards. However, don't make the mistake that I have and use a brush that you've just used some red on and then have red come out there. We're gonna to have to fix that in our later stages. So as far as cleaning wise goes with this, um, this is a product that is close to varnish. It's not quite as abusive, but um, a little bit of TLC, some soap, uh, maybe even getting some thinner in there and then reconditioning. It's probably a good idea just to keep this brush in perfect condition uh, after using a, it's a pretty heavy duty product um, to be using a, fancy hairy brush brush on um, so just be aware that it might have soaked in give it a thorough clean afterwards okay so on to the next step we're going to be using just these two nice and simple 
And what I'm going to try and do is echo the kind of shading that I had on this panel anyway. So rather than coating it all in more gas bone and then going to white scar, I'm going to put white scar where this lighter section of that panel was anyway. Uh, it's kind of like uh, this panel here insofar as it has a lighter section in the middle. So I'm going to put white scar down in this type of zone using a small, trying to be fairly delicate, and then I will blend it into the more gas bone, or I could do it the other way and do the more gas bone here and then go to the white. But either way, I don't want to completely obscure this. The other approach you could have is to actually draw yourself some marks on the masking tape. It's there to be used after all. So my first step is to use the white scar. Now, we've got masking tape here. I really recommend you use some high quality modeling stuff, uh, Tamiya or likewise. And um, another thing is when you're at the stage when you're waiting for these to dry, if you use a hair dry, that heat will actually make your masking tape rise off unless it is high quality stuff. So either don't use heat, just blow on it. I use my airbrush to dry it a little bit faster. Obviously there's no heat involved there or, um, or use some high quality masking tape or just let it dry between layers. So we're not looking to do anything heavy now and we're definitely not looking to do anything that doesn't go directly at this masking tape. I think this is a stencil at this point. And as with stencils, you wanna go right down at it. Uh, not at any angle, not trying to push under the edge. And in fact, you could, you could do it at this angle here to make it less likely to creep its way under the edge if that's something that you're worried about. So I'll do that up and down. Building it up carefully, like I said, it's um, it's a bit different from normal because I'm really conscious that I don't want any type of uh, moisture making it creep anywhere. So I want a very small amount of it on my brush. White scar is quite a wet paint as well, so to be mindful of. Remove it here. When I'm happy that I don't have any excess, I can take it to the model. And at this point, I am fairly happy with starting to fade it into our more gas bone, which is gonna have far greater coverage. So also shouldn't be as wet, there we go. Tell instantly looking at that, that's more gloopy. So I want this to be uh, a, a white stripe for the majority part. So it's now gonna take me a little bit of time to kind of fade between the two. But that mix is gonna open up. Just some better coverage there. Now, obviously guys, you can do this with an airbrush. It works exactly the same with the airbrush. It's just, I wouldn't be stippling this stage. I'd be airbrushing it. So if you do have one and you want to use one, it is easier. Uh, undeniably, this is easier using an airbrush. But I wanted to show you that it can be done without one because not everyone has access to one. So making sure not to build up any, um, any kind of excess, any more than is needed on that brush there with a the dampening pad. And I'm just going to keep working backwards and forwards here. I'll show you one more stage. Very careful with my pressure, very careful with my angle that I'm painting at. I'm very careful with not building up any excess of paint. That's the big deal. If I do build up an excess and get overspill, I'm going to have to fix that with some, uh, some uh, sneaky distraction weathering later on. So I'm going to build that up a little bit more and then we'll come back to the exciting stage. Okay, so fingers crossed, moment of truth. Um, you can notice, let me find a pointy brush. Around this section here, I've not got quite as good coverage as I like. With it being close towards the edge of the stripe, that's a part that would be likely to get weathered anyway. So hopefully we're good. That's come out all right, I think. So far. Last bit. Okay, we've got a tiny, tiny couple of areas where the masking hasn't worked perfectly. As I said, make sure you use some high quality stuff. 
um, I didn't have any to hand and I just got excited about doing a tutorial but really I should have prepared with some better stuff so we've got a little escape section here and aside from that we're pretty good we've got that kind of lighter middle section that I was after it does look very blunt at the moment but uh, let's see what we can do about that so the next stage is to get a brush you can go at this with whatever you like. Use a toothbrush. I use this brush that I use to clean my airbrush sometimes and get some water. You just want water on it. So let's see how this goes. This is completely live and raw, uh, fingers crossed. Now, if I recall correctly, it takes a little bit of patience. I just got to keep working at it, but it, it it does involve softening what you've got so far. So I'm going to make all of it wet, and then I can just concentrate on the areas where I want to get it. And that is going to be mostly uh, towards the bottom and top and on the edges. So let's see if I can get some effective chipping here. There we go. Okay, that's what we're after. I'm going to try and keep it from in a, in a top-down sense, just in case we get any lines developing. I want them to make sense visually, so I'd like them to be lines that are kind of top to bottomy. You could use something slightly more aggressive than a brush here, but if you do that, you should varnish your model beforehand. Um, like you could use toothpicks or um, a slightly more abrasive, uh, a non-hairy brush, but obviously as well, you want to make sure that these areas you're you're taking off, you don't just migrate paint down to another area of your model where you probably don't want it. If you had airbrushed these stages, guys, it would all be oh oh dear, okay, we've got. <laughs> full migration there. This guy's looking very weathered. I was just going to say if you had used an airbrush guys then this stage should be easier to remove. So I think I've, I've, I've awoken it at this point. And because I've used the heavy chipping one a large section of that has come off. Um, we will work with it. That's my fault being heavy handed though so Carefully go from the edges here. And then any of this excess stuff, carefully pick up. So obviously, like I said, I don't want flecks of white paint elsewhere on my model. So I'll go around and I'll collect all these excess bits and then we'll see how it looks. Okay, there we go. So obviously we had that one big flake come off, but uh, aside from that, the other sections I'm quite pleased with. Like I said, AK do have one that's for uh, for lighter chipping, so that's easier for getting these type of very, very small uh, scrapes and stuff, but that looks really cool. If we added some weathering to that, it'd be fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick time-lapse of me doing this on another vehicle. I'll do it start to finish, and then you can see the type of work that goes into the entire process. Okay, so this has come out really well. Um, I chose another very unhelpful not a non-flat surface for this. Um, the stippling worked quite well. It's a lot easier when you're using a dark color. It just it just goes down better. A black and ink by darkness mix over over a very very light base coat is just a dream. It turns out. So there we go. Super successful. Really easy. Very forgiving. 
A um, couple of things to note, I would varnish the entire section. If you're looking to keep the surrounding area clear, you probably saw and you can see the back of my hand showing the result of this, that Incubi Darkness, um, when you've worked on it, you will end up uh, you will end up affecting the surrounding area. Um, only, only tinting it ever so slightly, but if that's something you don't want going on, then if you varnish the entirety of this area before you put your chipping medium on, before you do the stripe, whatever you do on this section, you can completely remove it uh, very easily. But I think that's a super effective result. Um, like I said, it's forgiving. Um, it's not, if, if anything goes wrong, you could always scrub it really hard and try and get rid of most of it. But uh, that's super, super effective. And with a little bit of streaking or other types of weathering, you can level up your painting really easily in terms of this. It's a lovely area of visual detail to have going on on a model. All right, so there we go. That has come up pretty well. I'm pleased with both of these. Uh, the black is a little bit easier, and I think that's because of the surface it was going on, but also because it's just a heavier, it's a more heavily pigmented paint. It's really easy to get good coverage very fast for black, so you can put down a thinner layer and get more out of it, um, which is why people assume you need an airbrush, because you can get a good coverage with, with an airbrush with any paint, no matter how pathetic its pigments are. I really enjoyed it though, and I think it's a really strong technique, and I'm definitely gonna be trying it out in the future and maybe putting some weathering over the top of it. So you might see these vehicles being featured again, like I said. Please give the video a like if you've liked it. If you didn't, give it a down like and let us know why, because we'll take the feedback on board and we'll act upon it in future videos. Uh, any other suggestions or questions you've got, go for it. And uh, otherwise, please hit that subscribe button and the little bell notification so you see when that content comes up in the future. And thank you very much for watching.